We have Reverend Victor Kazanjan, the director of the United Religions Initiative. Thank you, Jeff. As I begin, I want us to imagine, imagine the millions and millions of ordinary people who are working for peace every day, people of religious and humanistic belief, who, like Roger said, largely go unrecognized. People who, as Aza said, are largely women and young people working for peace in their communities. Those are the people who are the movement for peace that we represent, who we work with, and we call them into this space as we talk about confronting violent extremism. In the 15 years since its founding, the United Religions Initiative has become the largest grassroots interfaith peace-building organization in the world. During this time, URI has developed and piloted, aha, <laughs> humanistic or divine, we will leave that up to the... <laughs> During this time, URI has piloted a new approach to building diverse and cohesive communities while engaging the causes of conflict and injustice that have plagued the global community. The impact of URI has been profound, and the work of our now more than 760 cooperation circles in 94 countries plays a critical role in reducing violence and building cultures of peace, justice, and healing. URI's cooperation circles actively engage in daily interfaith cooperation by rallying people of different faiths to address critical issues in their community, such as health, education, economic justice, caring for the environment, women's empowerment, and youth leadership. People who would otherwise not interact are collaborating on solutions and establishing bonds as human beings, breaking down harmful religious and cultural barriers that fuel religiously motivated violence. And despite being more interconnected than at any point in human history, global events highlight our world ravaged by deep divisions among people of different religions and cultures. These divisions are rooted in historic grievances and are perpetuated by discrimination, prejudice, fear of the other, which collectively lead to social unrest, and ultimately to violence and human suffering. Military solutions have continued to fail in delivering sustainable solutions to interreligious conflict and countering violent extremism. Around the world, groups like URI, Religions for Peace, and so many of the groups represented here have been hailed as important alternatives to violent and military intervention. When people of faiths and cultures work together on issues that improve their community, it fosters conditions that reduce the potential for violence. This model has been highly effective for reducing violence and achieving long-lasting peace, and it combines the dual strategy of interfaith peace building and resolving the causes of conflict. At the same time that individual grassroots groups are creating impact in their communities. URI, like other interfaith networks, creates a global network in which unprecedented opportunities to share strategies and collaborate on interfaith peace-building efforts happen. Through interfaith education, interreligious dialogue, community organizing, skill building, and peace training, URI is building a cohesive and connected grassroots movement committed to a world living in peace. In addition, our work with religious leaders and with the UN connects the voices of the grassroots to institutional leaders and policy makers. So what does this look like on the ground? Where there is active violence occurring, URI grassroots groups intervene by bringing together combatants into dialogue using conflict, transformation, and peace-building strategies to stop the violence, to build relationships, and to create conditions essential for lasting peace. In the Philippines, grassroots groups worked with the military, government, and rebel leaders 
to create the relationships that form the foundation for the Banzamoro Agreement. In Pakistan, the more than 47 URI groups work to establish relationship in the midst of constant threat of violence. In Nigeria, in Yemen, young people are organizing to create alternatives to being recruited by violent extremists. Where the legacy of violence and war has left deep scars on communities, grassroots groups are creating coalitions of people of different religions who are working together to restore relationships and build communities and countries. Recently in Sri Lanka, I witnessed this as URI and Sarvodia partner in building relationships in more than 1,500 villages across Sri Lanka to both prevent the recurrence of the horrible violence and build positive relationships in the Balkans, in Bosnia, Herzegovina, and in Serbia, grassroots groups are working together to build the foundational relationships that prevent the recurrence of that horrific violence. Where conflict has not yet erupted but violence into violence, but issues of poverty, injustice, human rights violations are creating an environment ripe for extremism. Grassroots groups work to address such issues as economic development, education, health, women's empowerment, and youth leadership. This positive work in times of relative peace is critical to preventing the conditions for violence. In Europe, grassroots groups engage the refugee crisis. In Cambodia, India, Argentina, Colombia, Bangladesh, URI is active in working to establish this web of relationships that leads to peace. And finally, where ignorance and prejudice erode civility and fragment communities, URI cooperation circles build bridges of interreligious and intercultural understanding, enabling diverse communities to establish cohesive relationships. In the U.S., in Australia, in New Zealand, work to develop curriculum for schools that includes interfaith understanding as part of a large, larger multicultural agenda is crucial. The power of religious communities and their potential partnership with us all in the United Nations lies in the breadth of their reach and the courage of their conviction. Religious, spiritual, communities span all continents, all cultures, all economic classes, all political ideologies, and for most of these communities, justice and peace is what they desire most. These are powerful allies. This is the grassroots movement that's essential. And as Aza said, leadership comes at this level, at the grassroots, ordinary folk, the courageous ones doing the work in communities. These are the ones who evoke the powerful forces of compassion and love, the unstoppable forces necessary to stop the forces of hate and violence. The partnerships that happen here, that happen with grassroots groups around the world, this is, as Roger said, the good news of what is happening, even though what is mostly reported is the extremist violence that happens. So we are part of that movement, and we must all our efforts into supporting that movement as we connect leadership at the grassroots and at the policy making level. Thank you.